Welcome to another episode of How Not To Run A Business, featuring this car. This car is not my car, this is the 500,000 mile past the Picasso, hashtag past the Picasso. And tomorrow, I'm supposed to be taking it to the Festival of the Unexceptional. Um, the other day, I had an opportunity to do some work on it, and uh, instead of doing that work, I put it on the rolling road to make a point um, to Ian Hubnut. And I successfully made that point, the thing I chose not to do at the time, well, other than to remap it, because I did actually try remapping it, and then as you will have seen, ran around crying, desperately trying to unremap it, to re-remap it, back to how it was, um, because it nearly killed it. But it's fine. It's all right, it worked. Um, so I tried doing that, that didn't work. What I didn't do was anything on the sills. I thought, oh, just, yeah. it's not my car anyway. Um, owner of the car, he has ploughed more money into it, he has paid me to do work on it, I have changed. Top mount, front spring, shock absorber, drive shaft seal, something else, CV boot, and the throttle cable. Done all that work. So he has invested some of that in it, and he has ploughed money into it when it was with Ian, and he ploughed money to get it through the MOT back in January, so he's committed, but he doesn't want me to do the sills. The problem is I've looked at the sills again, and I'm not actually entirely sure it would be completely legal for me to drive it to Festival of the Unexceptional because it's slightly structurally compromised at the moment. Oh, and it's got a flat tyre. Only on the bottom, but it's... Well, when I move it, it moves to wherever the wheel is, so it's... I think I'm going to have to change that, but that's not exciting. Neither is the sill, but I'm going to make it exciting. Now, when I say more exciting, that is, of course, a lie, because this is a Citroen Zara Picasso HDI. And exciting and Citroen Zara Picasso HDI do not go together. It's not exciting, but it is going to become well, possibly a modern horror film. Because this is the smallest hammer I own. Well, actually, that's a lie. It's not. It's a barefaced lie. This is not the smallest hammer I own. The smallest hammer I own has the same head, but a handle about that long. But I prefer this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the sill. So the sill has got worse. And I shall move the camera so you can see it better. But, yeah. Yes, this is... Um, well, you can be the judge. You can be the judge. You will see. Let me position you. Oh yeah, look at that. As you can see, we have a big hole which I can put my little hammer in. And then if I knock this, this is an MOT repair patch that has been welded on very badly on top of rot that was already there. I don't know when this was done. I have a horrible feeling, probably not that long ago. So that is just horrendous. That is just, that is everything that's wrong with MOTs. You can just weld a patch over a hole. The hole is still there, the rot is still there. And as you can see inside, the rot has continued. This is the, well, technically the floor. This is a strengthener. And in there, the big hole that the hammer goes through is the inner sill. So basically this car has no sill. The bit of metal inside there is the side of the floor and I think the seat belt was bolted to it. But so the rust goes like through here and then it goes down there and is it, is it there? Oh, it's there as well, that's good. Oh, there you go, then it goes stiff. So yeah. And it's there. And it's there, and it's, yeah. I mean, it is dead, isn't it? If this is anyone else's car. Yeah, my little hammer is just. So basically, everything here is knackered. Which is a problem. It's a problem because I want to use this car tomorrow. There are bits of sponge in this. Look, in the rust. Because I washed this car. There are bits of sponge in the rust because I washed it. I washed it for Festival of the Unexceptional. In fact, this is one of the only cars I've ever had where it looks the same 
whether it's dirty or clean. Like it doesn't look any different at all. It was very dirty, but it looked exactly the same. So I want to use this car, but that's an issue. But I'm not being paid to fix this car, but I have been driving this car and I have an affection for this car. So I kind of feel like, despite the fact it's a stupid thing to do from a business point of view, I'm going to fix this car myself. I'm, I'm going to take it upon myself to fix this car, but I can't, I can't afford to do a nice repair, which takes ages, butting, butt welding everything up, smoothing it off, grinding it, making sure, you know, getting it all to make it look like it was never done. And there's no point doing that because the sills themselves are knackered. There's a dent there, there's a dent here, it's a bit soft there, and the other side is beat to death. And you can buy sill sections for Picassos that do all of that. And that's what it needs long term. But this car cannot die now because of this, because someone didn't repair it properly last time. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna try and do this as fast as I can. And in fact, I have the timer from my 24 hour live stream, which I use actually now in work, the timer. See? Don't look at me, look at the, there you go. So I'm gonna reset that. And I'm going to time how quickly I can do it. I'm gonna set a challenge. I wanna try and do this in under an hour. A bit there, a bit there, a stiffener there, which is all sorts of funny shapes and you can't really get to. I'm gonna to have to cut the sill off back up to about here so I can actually get to it and then find some metal to make that out of. Yeah. I'm sure it'd be fine. And then yeah, get it all welded up, finished off and then drive it to thingy tomorrow. Yeah, so it's not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna be my best work, I'm saying that now. You will be able to pick holes in it, but I'm doing it for free, and I'm doing it in record time. Well, there is no record time, because there's no official record. Right, I've drawn my line. This is a big line. Oh, this is solid. So you're thinking to yourself, why are you prattling about doing that? Why don't you only cut out what you need to do? Because I'm trying to save time, and the cost of the metal is probably less than the time, and it's easier to cut out sections with a guillotine. Straight lines, easier. So this piece here is gonna be a big piece. This is gonna be quite a big CAD template I'm gonna to have to make there. But basically, it's gonna be a curved piece that comes down and has a 90 degree kink here. So the intricate bits are inside. It's quicker to cut things out with a guillotine than it is to, with, well, with a grinder or a plasma cutter. Plasma cutter is fun, but you have to clean it all up afterwards because it looks like ass when you're finished. Anyway, right. Wake it up. <sighs> what time is it now? Half 12. Ready? Is it going? It's going. Let's go. No! Idiot! Plug it in! Good God, the state of that. Ow! Damn, I'm rushing. Rushing is not good. Oh. If only I had something I could cut with. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Bloody hell.
bad. It's really bad. So there's a stiffener there, which is what that is. And that is one millimeter plate steel. Great. So basically that hasn't got to be the same shape as that one, which is good because I won't be able to make it that shape. There's the seat belt mount <laughs> right there, surrounded by all the rust, which you wouldn't be able to see on an MOT, would you? That would be an MOT fail, but you can't see it because it's hidden by the sill. So it passes, even though it's just as unsafe as a car that's got a big hole next to it, because it has got a big hole next to it. Look, I can touch the seat belt mount through the sill. I think I'm just gonna have to go along here. What, what gauge is that? Oh, that's, that's quite thin. So I'm just gonna have to go along there. That stiffener I put in, I, I think it's gonna be a piece of box section steel welded into place. Uh, I really think that's all it will be, but it will perform the same job. In fact, if anything, it'll be stronger. So, and then I've got this right angle at the bottom still. I'm not gonna get it. This is not happening in under an hour because it's worse than I thought it was. So, Let's make a line. Twenty seven minutes and twenty three seconds. And I still haven't cut all the rust out. This is why restorations take a long time and cost a lot of money. Well, they're cheap if you just put a plate over it. But if you do them properly, even quickly properly, they take ages. Let's go. We are now 43 minutes and from reading backwards there, 43 minutes and 44 seconds into the repair and I have just about got rid of all the rust. Well, no, that's a complete lie. I haven't got rid of all the rust. There is rust elsewhere, but in this bit here, it's gone. I've got rid of it. I've brushed it all the way out there. I've got to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do with that stiffener. There are bits of the sill up in behind the wing, which they do feel like they're there, but I don't know how good they are. I'm not taking the wing off. It's not happening. It's not an MOT fail because they can't see it. I mean, stupid, but that's the rule. Bit of anti-rust primer, or weld-through zinc primer. And then, I need to start making templates. CAD. Uh, past the Picasso is actually going to be repaired with a piece of old combi boiler. Right, so there's the first piece made. Just a little stiffener to go in there, which it isn't the most amazing fit, but then I don't have the most amazing time. I can weld that underneath. There'll be a seam along there, or stitches, more likely. Here is a piece of the old combi boiler. I can use it, so that's gonna go in there like that. It's fine, it's all good. Nothing to worry about here. Nope, nope, that's gone. It is not going to be pretty. It really is not going to be pretty, but 
It hasn't got to be, it's just got to work and be safe and solid. And I'm pretty sure it'll be that. And it's coated on the back as well, so, you know, extra uh, rust protection. Frankly, that's horrific. I'm embarrassed to show that, but I'm doing this in a rush. If I was doing it properly, all the joins would be perfect and it would all be, well, as close as I can get them, and it will all be neatly bump, uh, bumped up and I'll have little clamps in there and go through it very slowly. And but this, I haven't got time because we are now on 93 minutes and 20 seconds. That is not good because I've got to be going home in uh, one and a half hours. So, um, and yeah, and driving this tomorrow morning. Excellent. So, all right, what now? What I have here are a lot of offcuts of steel. This is new steel, but it's offcuts. And I'm hoping that some of them will just happen to be the right size, because you would be amazed the amount of times that that actually happens. Really, it does. It's quite astonishing. Like, oh, that's close. That is, oh, is that? I'll put that on the maybe. If I cut that down there, damn. I've reached the limit of what the uh, countdown clock can do. Right, 99.55. Reset. Why is it, oh, no, I don't need, why are you counting down from there? There we go, reset. Right, 99.55 plus. Plus. There we go. Just so we're clear, I can actually weld. I know it doesn't look like it when you look at everything in there, but there you go. Just there. It's amazing what happens when you've got new metal on new metal, isn't it? But that's a stiffener I'm putting in. So I've done this bit, that bit, I've put a stiffener plate in, or I've closed off the stiffener plate with some very rough cut metal, and now I'm just putting in a reinforcement, which is actually a bit of the L section I made by cutting some box section in half that I was gonna use on Clement that I didn't. So it's now found a purpose on this.
left we've got, keep you at a distance, I don't want you to see, it's embarrassing. Starting to have more sympathy with a person who welded this before. Mm -hmm. um, so, that and that, there's a join there because I didn't have a piece of metal that was big enough. I won't have a piece of metal big enough for the sill on the outside, that's the last bit I've got to do and that is going to be rough shod because I'm running out of time, big time. And I might even have to lip over the top of this for now. Horrible as that may seem. So you've got this kind of infill bit that goes, that does the whole thing. But then because the stiffener is now smaller, I added this in as well, like a reinforcement to bring the stiffness down as far as it would have been originally. It would have originally gone there, up there like that. So it's, it's covering the same ground basically. Um, I, if anything, that is looking at it, that's probably not stronger, but it might be as strong. Um, yeah, and it's all zinced and everything like that. Although it's going to get another coating. And it's going to have to deal with the fact that it's already hot because I don't have time for it not to be. Sorry, I know, I know, I know. You don't like this. It's not going to stick properly, but what else? It's better than nothing, isn't it? So. Right, and then the next thing is um, make the piece that goes on the outside, because that'll have this bend in it here. And then that lip at the bottom is the, f is the final lip that I will then, once I've got it tacked in place here, I'll drill all the way through and weld it all the way through. I'll pin them all together in one piece. And then I'll probably chuck a load of underseal on it or something, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to throw, I can't. I don't even think the wax oil was going to work. The gum was all gummed up, but it might, it's going to have to be something like that. Something ugly and quick. Because I'm very short on time now. Right. So I just need to trim a bit off the bottom here. That's all in, grind that bit flat. Maybe a little bit of there and a little bit of there, but if I had that tight at the bottom. Yes. So the last thing is to find a piece of metal that I can, I don't want to make it out of two pieces of metal. It's going to look stupid if I make a bend and then have a join in it because it's going to be all wobbly and just need a piece of metal that's 600 and, well, what's that? 665 mil. Yeah. Or 670, if we're being friendly. But that's 665. No, I haven't got anything. Got nothing. Already painted look. So that'll go like that. And I'll have to bend it and trim it and whatnot. And I've made these little holes here all the way around. These are going to be the spot weld holes. And the other ones, I'm going to cut this strip up. I'm going to lay this behind these holes and tack it in so that the replacement panel where something to butt up against then I can weld through both layers and then the fact that that is going to be an absolute nightmare to weld to won't be a problem it'll look like arse from behind but that's not that's no issue you're not going to see behind it, I mean, it'd be look bad from the front to be fair but a hell of a lot better than it did before don't forget I'm racing this 77 minutes plus 99 mm. it's not a quick repair um, right that's fine so yeah I can just get on with that and uh, race to the finish. Bollocks. I'm running late. That's gone round the clock twice. That's done 99 minutes twice, and now it's on 13. 
I think I have my last piece here, although that needs to go, I need to make sure I weld that in there first. Hmm. It's also uh, under, well it's got wax on the back, so that's good. Until it catches fire. Doesn't have to be as big as it is. It's better than it was, isn't it? I could run a bead along it now and it's better than it was, so. That is one of the worst sills I've ever done. I kind of, I have the quality of the welding that was done on the repair before it, I take it back. I withdraw my complaint. My, the whole patching over the top of it and then welding it, it going badly, and then just covering it in sealant. But yeah, the, the, this sill, it, it's the shocking quality. I haven't welded a car like this. A Sierra and an Alpha 75 were the two I've welded where it was like, oh my God, what is this made of? It, that is awful. It really is the cheapest, nastiest, globiest bloody metal. And I wanted to leave, I wasn't even gonna bother grinding it back, but I'm gonna have to grind it back, because look at it. Oh, I've got to. It's all twisted and distorted. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should, well I can't, because that did not go quickly. Can't do it, try and do it quickly, it goes wrong. I shouldn't have started. this thing on yes right it's some days later and i'm going to give a quick finish to the video i did about a week ago uh, possibly just over a week ago but no it was just yes it was one week and one day ago where that happened and i'm trying to make sense of it a little bit so um i tried to do all this it does come off i tried to do all this last minute as you saw and i reached a conclusion uh, trying to do things against the clock is a mugs game i ain't doing it again no because you rush everything and because you rush everything everything goes terribly and to add to that the quality of that steel along this oh my taxi <laughs> um the quality of that steel is pretty bad so uh, it was really really difficult to weld and then i was rushing it as well and then it wasn't like fine tuning the welder as i should have done and i was you know blowing holes and everything and then trying to fill it back up and it was stupid stupid it is solid, it is done, it's ugly. And what I'm gonna do before this car goes on Saturday, yes, I'm recording this on a Thursday. Um, if I get my timings right, you'll see it on a Friday, but possibly you'll see it on a Saturday, who knows. But um, yeah, for the uh, for the new guy who's gonna take it, I'd quite like to get it looking a little better than that. The shape is there, the strength is there. Um, it just needs rubbing down, a little bit of titivation and some protection. Um, but yeah, that's how it went to Festival of the Unexceptional. Um, I was there and uh, people sung happy birthday to me. Thank you if you did that. I'm really glad I wasn't near the stage when that happened, but I'm appreciating the thought. So uh, yeah. So you did see it, past Picasso did make it. The sill is done-ish. And um, I will make it look a little bit better and send it on its way to its next owner, who I'm assuming isn't gonna try and remap it. But before that happens, there is one more video coming and it's a big one. It's its hardest test yet. The biggest test this car will have in my possession. I have to wait and see what that is though. Because, you know, content and clicks. Yes, that is a bit of BX door. <laughs>